Real Ag Shops is brought to you by Princess Auto. Real Ag Shops is where we pull wrenches, keep the farm going, and get our hands a little dirty. Welcome to this week's tour. Good morning. Welcome to Dresden. I'm Mark Richards, and this is the shop for our farms. Uh, we're located just outside of Dresden. This shop's actually on the northwest corner of the town of Dresden, here in deep in southwestern Ontario. And our farms, if you saw the door on the way in, we share the shop. It's P Peaceful Acres Limited and Richard's Rolling Acres Limited. Share the shop space. We farm tomatoes and sugar beets together. We both have some corn, soybeans, and wheat. And this shop is kind of the base of the operations where we try to keep all the equipment running and in tune so we don't break down in the busy season. The shop is located just on the edge of the century old farm from the family, uh, about a mile away from the century farmhouse and about a quarter mile away from our old quarters at my uncle's place. And we moved here in 2016. How do we end up with a shop like this, some people ask. Well, this is a former public works garage for the town of Dresden. Upon amalgamation of Chatham-Kent with all the municipalities and townships becoming one municipality of Chatham-Kent, this building was deemed surplus. We did not get it. That happened in 1998. We didn't take over the shop in 1998. It was 2015. We started to look hard at this shop. A fellow had it for sale, and we thought it's not exactly what we'd build, but we thought when we got a look at it, we could definitely work with it. So we invested in this shop for less than half of what it could, would have cost to build a new similar shop ready to roll our toolboxes into. So in 2016, we made some decisions when we were moving out of the old shop and into this one. And I think a lot of guys that have their own farm shops will agree. Stationary benches tend to be junk catchers, so one of the first things we decided we're not going to have any wall-mounted benches or stationary benches, we'll have stuff on wheels. So as we go around the shop, you'll see we have three good rolling benches. We have one heavy one, two lighter ones. We can get a lot done there. All the welders, all the cutting torches, everything's on wheels. You move it to your job and all the toolboxes will roll around and fit to where you want to go. Typically in the winter time, a lot of times if we look around the shop right now, we have room to put actually two of these machines in. Um, we only have the one in right now. This is a 9660 John Deere. We have a 9650 as well. But we could be working on both combines. Far Bay, we typically have a winter lawn project in. It's usually the tomato harvester or the sugar beet harvester. It's a job that you can pick away at when there's nothing else doing. Try to keep the main bay open. 90% of the time for jobs that aren't going to be time consuming, you're not going to be waiting on parts. And because bay number one has the only door that's wider than 14 feet. So when they built this shop in the early 80s, the money came from the province. It was a state-of-the-art shed or shop for the municipality to have all their trucks and graders and backhoes and all that good stuff in here. But nothing that they ran was wider than 10 feet. So the not, job number one, when we moved in the shop, we had to put a bigger, we did need a bigger door and everybody can argue about how big a door you need in the shop. And if we had a built the shop, probably would have reconfigured posts so we had a slightly wider door, but we have a 23 and a half foot opening there and there isn't much. There's only one piece of equipment we own on the farm that we cannot fit in that door. And that's a 40 foot stack fold bar and that's a longer story. You can get it in on rollers or using the forklift, but um, most of the stuff you can get in here easily through a 24 foot door. Are wider doors nicer in some cases? Yes, but we may do with what we have. Right now we're standing in the heart of what we would call Bay 3. We've got a 14 foot door so you can get tractors with duels on. We have a service pit here to work on the bottom side of the highway trucks. And some jobs on a tractor are nicer to work on overhead. Uh, we had the steel covers made for the pit, so when you're not using it, you still have all this floor space to work. This is a pretty good example of the rolling benches. Um, 
We didn't build these, I bought them at an auction sale, but it allows us a nice work area to work. And with a nudge or two, you can move the tools, move it to where you need it to be. Gives you a nice surface to work on. Hang up some wrenches around the sides, a little bit of storage. Bay two, typically you pull stuff in bay one and then park it over there. So the combine's obviously been pulled in this way. Like I said earlier, we can park two combines in facing the other way and still have access to most of this bay and most of bay one. Bay four typically has something in it that needs long-term work. We've painted tractors on that side. A tomato harvester gets parked in there a lot of years to get worked on over the winter. We'll have a beet harvester in there, which does fit in the 12-foot doors, thanks to the German keyhole design of all European equipment that has to be less than 10 foot six wide and less than 12 foot six high. So that's kind of handy and most of our equipment folds up that wide as well so uh, the shop here is big enough when we uh, get closer to spring a 40-foot planter very easily unfolds in here the 30-foot planters unfold in here our 30-foot drill with tow behind cart you can back it in and have it unfolded in in the shop makes it nice for working on stuff and gives you room to get stuff done without guys tripping over each other or having to pile stuff up one of the reasons we looked at a bigger shop is you got a couple guys, two or three guys working semi full time. Our previous shop was a decent shop, it was an old barn. We added an addition on the front. You could get a combine, a couple tractors. But the problem was if you ran into a job that took more parts than you thought and you had to wait on parts, if that job happened to be the one at the front end of the shop, because we only had one way to get in and out of that shop, then everything was held up while you waited for those parts. This allows us to strategically place stuff. So if something gets held up, you can still get other stuff in and out. So a, another big part of what we do on this farm, we're a little considered fairly innovative. And a lot of times we'll build or modify equipment to suit what we think we need. Sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. We have a unicorn yard behind the shop that has projects that have failed the test. But nonetheless, we still have the tools and equipment in place. So if we come over this direction, we'll see we have a nice steel rack. It's fairly organized. We know where rounds and flats and squares are. Sizes, you learn really quick. You look at the end to find the size you need. So maybe not the best placement, but on the other side of bay four, if we come over here, is a chop saw and a small drill press station. And we use along this wall to store blocking and try to keep it fairly neat. And a spare toolbox is over there. So as we go along this wall, bay three is where a lot of the services get done. So all the filters for all the tractors and trucks are stored on shelving down here. We have a toolbox with supplies, oil filter wrenches, greasing tools, uh, charge stations for the cordless tools we use and then bulk oil, both engine and hydraulic stored along the wall near an air outlet. Bandsaw for cutting steel. And then if we look in the direction of bait, at the front of bay two, the two rolling benches there, the heavier one with the big vices on is usually our welding table. And the other ones are nice and easy to roll around so you have a work platform when you're working on a piece of equipment you need some place to put parts or work on a part. Um, plasma cutter. We found shopping carts are really easy ways to get stuff on wheels like the plasma cutter. We have a arc welder on shopping cart. We didn't steal them. Somebody else did and brought them to us. So the way the building's set up, our work area inside for the shop is about 75 feet deep and 96 feet end to end. Both ends of the building have about a 24 foot section on them. This end is our offices. The other end that has been segmented off for cold storage. The municipality used to store aggregate like sand and gravel and cold patch and salt. So we'll take a look in the offices now. Here's where I will sit and do a lot of work in the winter time. It might include looking up parts for the project we got in the shop might include looking at YouTube videos to find ideas for things you might want to build or how to do something you don't know how to do. But a lot of time will be spent with the current software that's up on the screen doing books. 
budgeting and planning, which I know are the most exciting parts of any farmer when he thinks about what he likes to do the best, but I will not back off saying it's probably the most important jobs that you do on the farm are the planning, budgeting, and making sure that you're doing things the way you want to do them and making some money at the end of the day. And now at the other end of the shop, we have a door to the cold storage area. This was split into four different bays. They used it, as I said earlier, for aggregate. We've got storage here, the air compressors, and it's an insulated hut in here. And as we go down through the bays, used oil, extra tires, these are all sprayer tires, the stuff for changing oil, pans, pails. And then back here, we took a, one of these cement walls out, which was no easy feat. Made this into one bigger area, put a roll-up door in so we can store stuff that we're not using, like front mount tanks only get used in the spring. Spare parts for the strip tillers, spare irrigation pump, etc., and a bunch of spare tires for some of the equipment we run. So Now we're standing in the mezzanine of the shop, a, a feature that we really liked when we looked at the shop. We got a cement floor up here, and we can store all kinds of parts. If you look, take a quick scan of the parts area, just trust me, we know where everything's at. The other feature here is we can, the section of the railing comes out, we can forklift up pallets, and we have a pallet jack up here to move stuff around. It keeps stuff off the floor of the shop and stored close to where we need it. If you take a look, this gives you a pretty good view of the size and scope of the shop, and we got lots of room down there. And you can kind of see how the bays are set up, and we try to keep them open. So, so why did we buy the shop? We were looking for a slightly bigger place. We could get more machines in and still be able to work on them, even if we were waiting on parts for one job. We could move stuff in and out. This ended up costing us less than half of what it would have cost then to build a building that wasn't quite this big and didn't have an office on it. The other reason I like this shop is it's not in my yard. And that's something some people like, some people don't, but when you actually have to leave the yard to go to work, it changes your view on how what work is. And you're not as apt to slip out after supper and go sit in the office for three hours when you know you have to actually pack up and go over to the office. Quality time at home, and think about that, especially those of you with younger kids. Quality time at home with the family is worth more than that extra two hours of work in the office because the office is right in your yard. So. We love the setup. We love the way the shops worked into our operation. If we built new, would we do it the same, exactly the same? Definitely not. But for what we paid and what we got, we're fairly happy and satisfied, and we make pretty good use of the shop space we bought.